It's finally time that we unravel the mystery of the magnificent and manipulative Mr. Mix... Yes, uh, oh my god. It's Mix... Yes... Spit... Lick... I know there's like six other ways to say it, but you can handle this and we can all still be friends, capiche? Mr. Mixia Spitlick is the little floaty magic dude who flips our heroes on their heads on a regular basis, and sometimes, but not always, sounds like Gilbert Gottfried. How can you not know me? You're breaking my heart! He's appeared in nearly every single version of the DC Universe, causing problems for Superman and his super friends since the original wartime Superman comics, by use of a variety of diabolical pranks ranging from harmlessly turning people into farm animals to destroying all of existence and then bringing it all back with a giggle. Curiously, in a 2017 issue of Action Comics, Paul Dini introduced the concept of Mr. Mixia Spitlick always being the same Mr. Mixia Spitlick every single time we see him no matter the medium. That there aren't different versions of him in every reality, there's just infinite realities and one single Mr. Mixia Spitlick cruising and bruising. But is Mr. Mixia Spitlick truly always the same guy? Or are there any contradictia Spitlicks? Really tried to make that work. I'm James Strecker, and today we're going to be looking at 80 years of Mixie across comics, cartoons, TV shows, video games, and everything in between to figure this out. Because this is what I do to feed my family now. I'm going to kill you! You shouldn't get ahead of yourself! Look, we all want to be kids every once in a while, right? That's why it's important to fill your house with action figures and toys like I do. And really, some of the best deals I've ever seen for this kind of stuff are on Big Bad Toy Store. You guys are asking in the comments all the time how we get some of the stuff you see in the backgrounds of our videos, and this place has so many goodies. DC, Marvel, Star Wars, anime, Transformers, it's ridiculous. Big Bad Toy Store has a wide range of products from your masterclass detailed statues to your old reliable pop figures, and basically everything in between. I spent like two hours just looking around the site because every time I clicked on something I'd be like, oh they have Star Trek stuff too? Oh He-Man? Oh that's the lowest price ever for this Steppenwolf statue! Holy crap, don't tell my wife! Whether you're a casual fan or a serious collector, Big Bad Toy Store's got you covered. You can go with the standard grading and take them out of the box like me, or opt for a collector's grade which gets you a mint condition little guy all nicely plastic wrapped and pristine. And the best part is that everything is $4 shipping. No matter how much stuff you order or what it is, shipping is just $4. That's it. But what if I I wanted to order 600 Funko Pops. It's four dollars. So click our link in the description and use that leftover Christmas cash to nab yourself some sweet collectibles from Big Bad Toy Store. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to Mr. Mixia de da Puta. <laughs> When Mixie's design from Superman the Animated Series showed up in the backup story of Action Comics 975, it was a real treat for me. Mr. Mixie Spitlick weaves a stunning visual tapestry describing how each and every time you see him anywhere ever, he's always the same little guy. Or not so little, Thomas Lennon is 5'8 after all, and that's not short short, that's Ted sized at least according to his driver's license, so don't ask questions. Now tons of DC characters get reintroduced across different media all the time with the same backstories or cheeky references to past versions of themselves, and that doesn't mean they're THE same character. When we see Christian Bale Batman, it's not THE same Batman as George Clooney or the other George Clooney. Are these the same George Clooney? Never mind, that's not what we're talking about. From a certain point of view, that's what Mixie writers have been doing for forever too, taking the established 1940s comic book imp and going, and here's my interpretation. So with the same guy retcons, how does that work? What makes Mixie so different? You're smart. You've seen the latest Spider-Man and Doctor Strange movies, you've watched Rick and Morty, you know what the multiverse is, or you haven't seen any of those things, thereby creating another universe where you have. See, you get it, you're smart. CC Comics' multiverse has been around a while, and a few years ago, Grant Morrison and Ryan Hughes actually mapped the thing, showing the grouping of different Earths surrounded by layers of different realms and afterlifes and this, that, and the other. But all of this exists in the third dimension. 
Mixie comes from two dimensional planes higher than that, one of many fifth dimensional beings in DC, like Batmite, Quisp, Zook, Thunderbolt, even Larry from Teen Titans. Well, actually, Larry comes from dimension four and nine eighths, but you get it, you're smart. The periodic table of DC states, the fifth dimension exists beyond the first four dimensions, beyond even time itself. And as our boy Ted put it so eloquently on a recent episode of our podcast, Jump on the Batwagon. Parallel Earths are separated by different frequencies, but different dimensions. I mean, think about a second dimensional thing. That's a piece of paper. We're in a three dimensional world. So think about what our world looks to fourth dimensional beings and even fifth dimensional beings like Mr. and Mrs. Spitlick. Yeah. And thank you for continuing to say his name like pretty dang good. I wish part of it from the beginning. Well, almost the beginning. The comics, the toys. I was on the cartoon show. The cartoon show? You've got to think outside the third dimension, Junior. This thing between me and your pop spans realities. Superman and Mr. Mixus Spitalik, Mitchet Spulk, Mitchell Plick, infinite variations. What's life and death in this world are pages in a coloring book one dimension over. I'm the only one who sees the big picture. The only one who can pop from world to world. Seems to mean he's even the same Mixie down to when he's in a kid's book or when he's a toy or something. The recent My Adventures with Superman cartoon also has a mixie explaining how he's messed with Superman across several realities, including the DCAU, continuing to solidify this concept. And the most recent edition of the DC Comics Encyclopedia says, Mr. Mixia Spitlick has pestered Superman in every reality. He can transport himself to anywhere in the multiverse and has near unrivaled knowledge of the cosmos. It's canon in the eyes of the almighty publisher. I have been present through all of what has has been and what will be. So why question it then? If it's in official guides, written into a comic, written into a show, isn't that enough? Well, you may have heard of a little thing called retroactive continuity. It wasn't always meant to be this way. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster certainly didn't have any of this in mind when they wrote the first Mixie comic during World War II. But after retcon, after reboot, after relativity remix, that's the idea today. Plus, when have official guides ever been 100% reliable? It's always just Scott Beatty doing his best. Keep up the good fight, Scott. We love you. So, like the ridiculously nerdy nerd that I am, I'm going to fact check our friends in the biz. I'm going to figure out if Mr. Mixie Spitlick is really always the same guy. But like, what, do you expect me to read and watch every single appearance of Mixie from the past 80 years? <laughs> well, I did, right up until you chuckled like that. Well, no, there's no way. But calm down, here's what I did consume, because it's still a lot. Every cartoon episode he's appeared in from the 1960s to today. Every live action television episode he's in or mentioned in. Every video game he's in. Every official DC guidebook that gives him an entry. And of course, like a good boy, every major comic story he's featured in. Including his very first, and at least one issue if not multiple, from every era of DC. Golden Age, Silver Age, Post-Crisis, New 52, Rebirth, The Works, which is still 94 things in three weeks. It is too much! <laughs> this has led to being confident in the basics of what makes Mixie Mixie, which we can bounce off each version and determine whether or not they're the same purple-hatted prankster. He comes from the fifth dimension, specifically a world called Zerf. From here, he can view events of the third dimension. I can see everything from the fifth dimension. Think of it like switching channels on TV. And your channel is the best, soups! He's centuries old, screwing with the third dimension nearly just as long. His consistent goal for hopping dimensions is the chance to pit his zany antics against Superman. I can't help if I keep goofing on that big log. It's what I do. And when he's tricked into saying his name backwards, he's banished back to the fifth dimension for 90 days, all his magical fuckery undone. For a dude so chaotically unpredictable, he's surprisingly consistent. And here's something that doesn't matter. Him looking different than the last time we saw him. Mixie can magically change his appearance. He can fit each reality's style. He can disguise himself himself as anyone 
and anything. Mixia Spitlick's gnome-like appearance is the closest we can come to perceiving his actual fifth dimensional form, and also exhibit different lens, which imps are probably even aware of. <laughs> the Mixion Sen is always some fresh retake. He's a Dragon Ball character in Maz. He's even Howie Mandel in this one. Countdown to Mr. Mixia Spitlick accidentally posting a TikTok of a prolapse. Mixie has been puppeteered by so many writers across so many instances, there's no way they all talk to each other to keep cohesion. In fact, some of those writers were born after others had already passed away, so we have to come at this subjectively and form our own opinions. These are just my findings, but damn if I don't think I'm the first person to really do this and do this right, and I don't know if I deserve an award or retirement, but nevertheless, here we go. And for the sake of a smooth entry point, because this is the Watchtower database, we're going to begin with the DC Animated Universe. Don't worry though. I'll be hitting those other spots soon enough. Mr. Mixia Spitlick's first appearance in the DCAU was actually as a toy in the apartment of robotics engineer Carl Rossum, with Crypto the Superdog, Streaky the Super Cat, and Batmite. <laughs> But the real Mixie popped into the Superman animated series in the episode Mixia's Pixelated, also written by Paul Dini. Does this version fit the bill? I'm a superior being from the fifth dimension. That's him! For centuries now, I've been pitting my interdimensional magic against schmoes. That's him! But then you showed up. Superman! You, my friend, are the ultimate challenge. That's him! You make me say my name backwards and I'll split. Oh, three months. Give a take. That's him! Now, tiny thing here, Mixie does change the rule to where he now has to say his name backwards twice in a row, but that could easily just mean Mixie himself is setting up the game and the universe forces him to abide by it. At the end, Mixie has walls of Superman memorabilia lining his home, potentially from countless other super rendezvous, and he even transforms himself into a missile with a kryptonite warhead, despite not even a mention of kryptonite before in this episode. So he's gotta have met other Supermen before this, or at least been spying on DCAU soups. Brian pointed this out on the podcast, actually. <laughs> old man's growing up. I asked Paul Dini on Twitter if he had the same guy idea in mind when writing this, and he responded, I tended to think of him more as a troublemaker who existed in various forms, assuming various identities throughout time. Imps, genies, etc. There's a fun Iago parallel somewhere in there, but I digress. The episode's director, Dan Reba, also chimed in with, That notion was out there, but I don't know if we officially or unofficially adopted that stance. It's implied he harasses others in other dimensions and universes. He's essentially a trickster god. A mythical creature's name having power over them is present in many fairy tales as well, like Rumpelstiltskin. I'll let you keep the child <gasps> if, and I just love this part, if you can guess my name. <laughs> So while the showrunner's heads weren't necessarily in the same place back, oh god, bordering on 30 years ago, as they'd be today with Mixie, it's nice to know all the pieces of the puzzle are still there. When Mixie appears in Superman Adventures, his stories almost always amount to him manipulating time. He runs everything in Metropolis backwards. He time travels to Clark Kent's teen years, Parasite steals his powers, and he uses them to manipulate time, and Mixie goes back in time to before Krypton exploded, so we get a That's him! for that whole beyond time itself thing. My guess is time travel stories were just the easiest method of staying out of the way of the cartoon's continuity, though ironically, Mixie's first adventures issue hit shelves months before Mixie's Pixelated aired. You blew it, you jerks! While usually the name backwards thing sends Mixie home, in his JLU comic appearance, he just decides that's not a thing anymore. And we even see Superman escape the fifth dimension once by saying his own name backwards. So this seems to be our first sort of contradictory element here. Even within the same or very, very adjacent universes, is is Mixie the one making the rules, or does he have to abide by predetermined ones? Keep this in mind as we go. On a positive note, Mixie knows the names of various Superman villains and supporting cast he's, to our knowledge, never met, even down to Catwoman. So that's a... That's him! For bearing witness to third dimensional events, which segues us nicely into Mixie's second and only other on-screen DCAU appearance, Little Big Head Man. Here, he manipulates Bizarro into doing his dirty work, so he can skirt around technically messing with Superman. Mr. Mizzy Blizzy? Eh, don't bother, you'll give yourself a hernia. But the fifth dimensional tribunal doesn't really buy it and say he's broken interdimensional law, which Mixie's girlfriend, Gispitlessness, echoes is for the umpteen millionth time. The judges say Mixie is repeatedly determined to invade the third dimension, at which point we're shown the cover of Action Comics number 80 from 1945. Clearly, the DC animated universe is 
not the first time Mr. Mixia Spitlick has caused chaos for Superman. So what better opportunity than now to roll back the rock to the dawn of time and check out Mixie's very first comics ever. What's fun is the way Mixius Pixelated takes a lot of cues from Mixie's first ever comic, which was technically his second appearance since some Mixie newspaper strips that were drawn later wound up being published first. You blow it, you jerk! Superman number 30 gave us the mysterious Mr. Mixia Spitlick. Or wait, that was Mixia's Tiplick? The T and the P are flipped? Must be a typo. Nope, that's how it's spelled the whole issue, and the next issue, and the next issue, and the next- It's even how it's spelled on that comic cover in Estas. Confusing, ain't it? Strangely enough, the original Golden Age appearances of Mr. Whatever are all spelled this way, on record by various Schwartzes as being pronounced either Muxitz Polk or Mixyitz Polk. Supposedly, as the story goes, when Mixie showed up in the Silver Age in the late 50s, Writer Jerry Coleman just plain forgot how to spell the name, and we wound up with Mixia's Spitlick for the rest of time. In Who's Who, we get two side-by-side -side entries for Mr. Mixia's Polk and Mr. Mixia's Spitlick, who, despite being pretty much identical in power sets, motives, and so on, are said to be separate characters. However, if you recall, Paul Dini's action comic story establishes that he's gone by this name and many other variations, and he's even made light of this concept down the road, like he's aware of the change. So, one more thing I should mention doesn't matter if it's different, the spelling or pronunciation of his name. Every writer, editor, and actor says it differently. My name is Mixus Pitlick. Mixel Plick. Mixus Pitlick. Mixius Pitlick. Mix what? First of all, it is, it's hard enough to say your name forward. You can handle this, and we can all still be friends, capiche? Anyway, those fun nods and estas, that'd be Mixie looking all over for... Walking into traffic, interacting with Rodan's thinker, and otherwise almost shot for shotting the original comic. It can be assumed that the episode isn't just adapting the comic, but Mixie is almost purposely repeating his old hijinks in Estas as a callback that he knows is a callback. This being the first time Mixie came into existence, at least for us, he of course exhibits all the expected qualifications, so he gets all the That's him! But the most interesting thing we learn about him in this original comic is how he got to the third dimension in the first place. We see Mixie in the fifth dimension pulling a big book off the wall, described as being from the secret volumes of a brilliant scholar, labeled Mixyitz Polkology. The study of Mixyitz Polk? It's first grade, SpongeBob! With this book, he learns magic words that enable him to hop between dimensions. She about to start some shit, Zed. Those books are way too advanced for her. Since Kilpitzism, his name backwards, seems to be the one that sends him back, it can be presumed that Mixyitz Polk gets him there. But does does that mean Mixia's whatever isn't his actual name, but just the name he goes by because of this big honkin' book? The DC Encyclopedia says his name is untranslatable, and the Periodic Table book calls it unpronounceable. His people speak a magical language that is translated into the listener's tongue as it reaches the hearing centers of the brain. So, much like the look of him, it seems Mixie's name, his true name, is incomprehensible to third-dimensional beings such as ourselves. In the world's funnest comic from 2000, he even tells Batmite his first name, and it's exceptionally long. His to put chick sigs a put pill quit mix. You might as well forget it, cause you're never gonna get it. Crisis this and crisis that later. The typo, or lack thereof, however you want to spin it, has since been retconned out of being a problem at all. The two are the same mixy. He would go on to appear in dozens, hundreds of comic books over the decades, a couple of which we'll come back to, but meanwhile, he found himself on our TVs pretty regularly even outside of Paul Dini's hands. The universe we know as ours may not be the only one, a fact that the Super Friends are about to become all too aware of. Mixie was brought out of the comic page and onto the screen for the very first time in 1966 in The New Adventures of Superman. Yes, very new indeed. This was a few years after his name change, so we get a nice Mixie's Pickling. I come from the fifth dimension. That's him! The only way I can return to my own dimension is to say my name backwards. That's him! So good so far. Now, I'm no expert in these older cartoons, but supposedly this is the same continuity as the string of Super Friends animated series that would come a few years later. David Gallagher, somebody, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Either way, same universe or not quite the same, Mr. Mixia Spitlick shows up in eight Super Friends episodes. Er, sorry, that's... Mixoplick. 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 Mr. Mixoplick? He's a cosmic joker from the fifth dimensional world of Zerf. And he gets no greater pleasure than to make a fool out of me. That's him! And a preemptive... That's him! 
We're speed running this shit now. In every Super Friends Mixy episode, it's more or less the same thing. He shows up, goofs around for somewhere between 7 and 22 minutes, they get him to say his name backwards, he's sent home, the end. Despite the fact that home is pretty empty and we never see any other fifth dimensional imps in this show. But my favorite aspect of these episodes is that almost every single one of them revolves around Mixie forcing the Super Friends into some kind of trap to do with a storybook or film or other piece of fiction. He scoops them up into a drive-in movie. He writes his own movie and casts the heroes as actors against their will. He even once puts them inside the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Ah, I get it, like Man of Steel, but now he's the Man of Tin. Well, well, it looks like the Man of Steel is now the Man of Tin. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I just fucking said. It's as if he knows this is a TV show and he can't help but have his pranks reflect that. Ever hear of reruns with changes? A couple times he even looks at the camera like he's on The Office. He knows he's on a cartoon, the little fucker. He also adds to our understanding of that big magic spellbook or whatever from his very first comic when he, uh, let me see if I have this right, tricks the super friends into turning their costumes or bodies into different made up technobabble elements, which he then combines and drinks and says, will make it so he can never be sent back to the fifth dimension again. We figured out your little scheme hours ago. So I changed my crypto lednium suit back into tin. What? Also, I just really like this part where Superman almost sounds sarcastic when he realizes Aquaman's been sent to his doom. Oh no, what have I done? But interestingly, in that very first 60s cartoon, Superman dresses down to Clark Kent to try and trick Mixie into saying Clipple Skim or whatever the hell passes for his name backwards in this continuity, and Mixie doesn't recognize him. In nearly every other appearance ever, he just automatically knows Superman and Clark are one and the same, which begs the sidebar, does time perhaps still pass in the third dimension the same way, for Mixie anyway, despite which universe he hops to? Like, is there a progression of some kind from Mixie's POV? For example, in a Super Friends episode, we get My mother taught me never to lie. I never lie. And then he literally learns how to lie from Lex Luthor in an 80s comic, then lies constantly in My Adventures with Superman. I went through some really excellent lies to avoid this exact Scenario. So it's not like every Superman's life is happening simultaneously across Earths. A 60s cartoon Mixie story is literally earlier on than a 90s cartoon Mixie story. Each of his appearances is at least 90 days apart, or roughly three months third dimension time, or George Relish Pants whatever fifth dimension time. 634 comics times three months spread out gets us to 158.5 years bare minimum that Mixie has been messing with Superman. And that's not even counting any TV show or anything else. Plus, Mixie himself even says in Deanie's comic that sometimes he just forgets and a year or two or six goes by, things run together. Hello, immortal quintimensional god being here. This number is almost twice the amount of time Superman's even existed at all. But while that was just a tangent for the sake of chaos, if time does march on for Mixie, so it must for the history of television. For his debut in 1989's first season of Superboy, he was played by Michael J. Pollard, who you may know from, I don't know, Roxanne? Scrooged? That one episode of the original Star Trek where the Enterprise saves a group of kids whose parents were all killed by a deadly virus? Yeah, I don't remember it either. And let me tell you, the dude is just, like, he must be drunk, right? Look, I know these losers are your people, and I love you for your loyalty to them. Really. The fifth dimension is another Universe is a parallel universe. Why is he moving his hands like he's giving a fourth grade class presentation? Superboy Mixie hits all the check marks as well. He's defeated by saying, A heart fell, kill, tick, zip some. <laughs> Goodbye, Mixie's Pitalict. That's him! And he's even there in the first place because of an ancient dimensional seal. The tribe shaman devised this totem to block the gate from their world to ours. And Superboy just yanked that shit out of the ground. That's him! So while this guy's clearly like 20 Budweiser bit licks in, it seems he's still the same Mixie. Ready or not, here he comes. <laughs> Debatably better is his next live action appearance on a 1996 episode of Lois and Clark. Name's Mixies Pitlick. Mr. Mixies Pitlick. It's spelled the usual way. He's from the fifth dimension, exhibits the powers we expect, all of that. <laughs> Though one particular scene early on gives us some interesting dialogue. 
See, in the past, when I used to come here, there would always be some joker who'd figure out how to banish me back to the fifth dimension, but not this time. See, there's only one three-dimensional biped that can stop me, and I have tracked him right here to Metropolis. He speaks as if he's met Superman, or at least some Superman or men, before. Mixie's more determined than ever to try something new and not fall prey to the same defeat once again. But of course, he does anyway. Oh, what? And by 2017, we've made it to the most recent and perhaps most peculiar instance of live action Mixie, the Arrowverse, in particular, Supergirl. Mi mix Mixie's mix Pitlick. It's spelled like it sounds. You used that one already? Mixie originally shows up on this show as a dashing young British man, played by Peter Gaudio. He's next in, so far, a pretty long line of, yeah, I have no reason to believe this isn't the same guy. Between genies, gin, and leprechauns, humans have been documenting contact for centuries. Why don't you just say your name backwards, buddy, and just, just zap back to wherever you came from? I watched you cross the dimension. That McGurk owl around. But this Mixie adds a new dynamic, extra rules in the the rule book. I'm not gonna marry you, it says Pitalik. That's one of the few things I can't make you do. That and make you fall in love with me and or stop you from killing yourself and or make you drink orange juice for some reason. It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it! See, as seasons pass and Mixia Spitlick reappears many more times on this show, now as Thomas Lennon, which he says is because he doesn't need to look all hot anymore, but you know, to each their own. New boot goofing. Oh. It's clarified that imps from the fifth dimension simply cannot kill anyone in the third dimension, which seems pretty antithetical to what we've seen of Mixie elsewhere. Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. I've gotta bug that jerk till I die. Or he does. In Justice League action, Mixie straight up drops the Daily Planet globe onto Green Lantern. Like he just murders him. It's reversed shortly after, but he does. In Superboy, Jaws from James Bond is another fifth dimensional imp who literally turns a man into a giant tomato and then explodes him onto the windshield of a car. Jesus Christ. Batmite and Mixie even kill the whole multiverse in World's Funnest. They reset everything at the end, but they still do it. And maybe that's just it. If it's undone after the fact, it doesn't count feels like a loophole the tribunal wouldn't love. But even past that, Thomas Lennon Mixie just kind of becomes a sympathetic ally to Supergirl and her team over the course of the show, even helping them to fight the main antagonist of the final season, all of which doesn't really jive with I'm Mr. Mixes Pitalik, an interdimensional peacekeeper, and I need your help. Nope. Pause. If this is you, you won our latest giveaway. Congrats. We left a reply to your comment for what to do next. Make sure it's really us with the check mark. Next giveaway is this stuff. You can enter to win by leaving a comment below answering our question of the day from the end of this video. Unpause. We'll come back to Thomas Lennon in a sec, but our analysis requires that I gotta toss this guy into the mix. Yes, spit lick. This is Mixus Pitalik. He calls himself a chaos god. Honestly, probably my favorite mixy story of the bunch. He doesn't just show up do some crazy shit, say kill tips exam and go away. Everybody knows the wizened old man from the comics or the slightly cuter wizened old man who <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried played. Right. We didn't want to do what people have seen before. Our memories as kids of being like, Mr. Mr. Pitalik was very sinister. It's yeah. like, oh my God, he's turning people into cats. Uh, <laughs> but that was the memory was he's a sinister guy. Yeah. So we want to play that up. This uh, Miyazaki like, wants to rule the multiverse and will destroy anyone who gets in his way. As is probably obvious, since this guy's half the basis for this whole video, this Mixie is no stranger to countless Supermans across the multiverse. He even knows the Earth designation numbers for various realities. He's a seasoned pro even if he does mix up the Earth numbers a little bit, but that is for another video. Oh, uh, right. But what does connect him back to the Supergirl version? His little purple hat. Both Mixies, at one point or another, are shown to derive their fifth dimensional powers from the classic bowler hat, like it's an anchor and conduit for the energies of their home dimension. In Maz, Mixie's hat is being held at the League of Lois Lane's HQ. He steals it back, he gets his powers back. In Supergirl, Mixie's hat is being held at L Corp. He steals it back, he gets his powers back. Even curiouser, the writers of these two shows never talked to each other. It's another one of just parallel ideas. A lot of it is like all of us wanted to pay a little bit of homage 
homage to like, you know, that classic Mixie that we yeah. all see. That like bowler hat is like such a big part of him, more than almost any other part of his outfit. The animated series, he's in a little suit when he's like flashing around with like Superman and like the John Byrne stuff. He's wearing like a weird leotard. Like yeah, it's the bowler the hat that remains. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I worked at Elcor for about two years before Lena found me out. We caught a criminal. He didn't have a name, but he had a hat that you could pull anything out of. Old drinking buddy of mine. I lost that hat to him in a poker game. That hat contains a lot of fifth dimensional magic. Oh no, there's a whole nother character earlier on in Supergirl who stole Mixie's hat named The Hat? What was he called before he had the hat? Yes, a season prior, Supergirl faced the Elite, which included this hat character. In the comics, the hat was just a regular old Japanese guy whose hat was powered by a demon. But here... I've seen hats like that before. They use fifth dimensional energy. He continuously pulls weapons out of it and uses it to teleport himself and the other villains around. We never learn how the Arrowverse hat got Mixie's hat. But when I asked one of the episode's writers, Eric Carrasco, you know, who also co-wrote Justice League vs. The Fatal Five, he told me the Mixie hat was my idea. It had always bothered me that we never let Mixie wear the traditional comic costume. Someday I figured Mixie was going to find out where his hat had gone and have words with the person who had stolen it. Dude even kept the Mixie hat prop, has it on a shelf in his house. Why does he get to be this cool? This connection between characters never made it into any episode, and Eric was only involved with the show through the end of this season. But he'd been seeding fifth dimensional related subplots for a while, with Mixie's first episode even having John Jones and Monel both mention encountering 5D imps before on their home planets. And the great Carl Lumbly, playing Jean's dad, referred to Jean's childhood imaginary friend, Zook. Zook! <laughs> Zook! You remember Zook? We showed him earlier for like three seconds. My long game was that you would find out this imaginary friend was not imaginary at all and was in fact an actual imp. And he would come and save our hero's asses the next time Mixia Spitla came to town. Eric was even gracious enough to share with me some plot idea notes he found from a 2018 writer's meeting on Supergirl. Hat could be an alien from a planet once infested with fifth dimensional imps. He found a hat in his home planet. The hat is a portal to the fifth dimension. And it's a purple bowler hat. It's Mixie's old hat. Half or more of these hat mixy plot points never actually saw the light of day, and with the show being over now, are probably just going to be unresolved forever. But does that mean that Mixy 911 and Miyazaki Plick being so different is really a problem? Now, I can't use any of my powers except to help those whom I have wronged. Great news. You're the last one. I am court ordered to do so by these guys? They turned him into a fire hydrant for 90 days once. You think they're going to be okay with him finishing his I'm sorry list and then going ape shit on the multiverse again? Unless they're all gone and super friends because Mixie killed them? As judge, jury, and executioner of my very own fifth dimensional universe, I hereby declare you both guilty. Oh, time doesn't work the same for him. He's hopping all over the when. Do not let this guy near the big grippy hand. When I asked Eric Carrasco about Supergirl Mixie being the same Mixie as always, he said, That's what I wanted. At one point in the first Mixie episode, I pitched that you could cut to Mixie at the end, back in the fifth dimension, and he'd be animated and voiced by Gilbert. Now that I would have loved to see. <laughs> Not every version of Mixie has the bowler hat, but not every version sounds like Iago or spells their name the same or isn't drunk. In fact, my favorite Mixie hat tidbit is that he's not wearing it when he first pulls the Mixiet's Polkology book off the shelf. He gets it after figuring out dimensional travel. He earns that little hat or crown or whatever it really is. And you know what? Good. That just makes me happy. I feel pretty swell about all this. All these mixies share near identical histories, motivations, and overall elevator pitches. Well, most of them. You may have noticed I skipped one live action Mixia Spitlick. The one from the 2004 WB drama, Smallville. This here is Mikhail Mixia Spitlick, the latest in a long bloodline of people from Balkan legend who could control luck. Stop. Cut. Ah, joke. We are obviously in a very different comic book depiction in past media moment. Teen, heartthrob, CWWB kind of ethos. He's young, handsome, and basically only Mixia Spitlick in last name, which he doesn't even say right. Mixiel Spitlick. Mixiel? Where's the other L, Mikhail? Where's the other L? Say that three times fast. It seems fans of the show have 
basically written off this character as not possibly being able to be the same imp we see everywhere else. But with that centuries old bloodline, could he potentially be at least related to the real deal? Oh, for sure. We'd always look for ways to suture to the true canon. It was a very general audience kind of show. You in the more geek mode, you got to think of so much of our audience was not you. We were always trying to make sure we were tapping in to a touch point that could link back to some basis in the comic books. There's a lot of thought put into stuff like that. So problem solved. He's not Mixie, but he is Mixie's like great, 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 etc. grandson or nephew or something. And before you run to the comments, it's not out of the question for Mixie Spitlick to get busy. He's got like half a dozen other kids or future descendants over the course of comics history. He gets around. There are a few other brief instances over the years that seem to contradict everything we've established. For instance, in Doomsday for the Fifth Dimension, Superman's baby rocket goes through a wormhole to the fifth dimension where he wreaks havoc on us all Mixies big and Mixies small, populated entirely by Mr. Mixia Spitlicks, with even a King Mixia Spitlick in place of the usual King Burp who rallies the others and defeats Superman. And so, in the fifth dimension, all was once again as it had been before. So this is somehow a different fifth dimension, or Mixie is just projecting this, or in the middle of a temporary takeover, or he just took over like he did in Super Friends. There's Bizarro Mixie Spitlicks we see across various art forms, all of which are clones of either Bizarro or Mixie himself, and are never really him to begin with. A Mixie from the Crime Syndicate's Antimatter universe makes a single comic appearance who's much more proper and helpful and whose being is horrifically affected the longer he stays in the positive matter universe. Clearly a different character. And of course, one of Superman's most famous stories, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, which Paul Dini even referenced as an influence on his STAS writing, featured a memorable appearance of Mr. Mixia Spitlick, who sheds his 3D disguise and appears as a walking mold of 5D energy. Superman seemingly kills Mixie by hitting him with the Phantom Zone projector at the same time that Mixie says his name back backwards, thus ripping him in half between the two places. But Mixie has been killed other times as well, usually by a laser through the chest weirdly, and always comes back anyway, because he's Mr. Mixia Spitlick. Now I get to kill him many, many times. And as far as contradictory elements go, like whether or not Mixie makes up the rules that send him home, or if he can or can't kill people, I'm gonna chalk those up to us never getting a look inside this beefy book. I've been using it to update my Watchtower databases from home. And to be honest, I'd appreciate it if you eased up off my back about it. Who is the brilliant scholar whose library it sits within? What secrets and bylaws of the universe does the study of Mixiet's folkology reveal? Is the recipe for Poison Ivy's delicious green cookie in there. I have to know. Somebody tell me it's not fair. Fair. Hey, if life was fair, would I look like this? So after all of that, is it safe to say that Mr. Mixia Spitlick is always the same guy? No spoilers. Mr. Mixia Spitlick is a character that is so malleable and fun, no matter what medium. Baldy, Baldy 2, Gizmo from Gremlins, pointy-eared elf demon with a hat full of supermans, whatever. Hi. Haven't you figured it out yet, bird brain? I'm Mr. Mixia Spitalik. I can do anything I want. It's even possible that he's the impossible man from Marvel Comics, but I do not have time to get into all that here. We'll do a short about it. Did you know we do shorts, like, all the time? What we can gather right now is, yes, he's usually the same guy. Most of the time, except for when he isn't, and the no's are very few and far between. I mean, even that toy in Carl Rossum's bachelor pad is probably actually him, or the target practice cutout that's on screen for like four frames in this Justice League episode. Jeez, Superman! The full picture? Start again and start slow. In the fifth dimension, a little bald dude who's as old as hell, or maybe even older, found and studied the book of Mixia Spitlickology, or Mixia Spolkology, or whatever, nabbed a dope little hat, and figured out how to go to the third dimension. There, he hopped between different realities, pestering different tribes of humans, eventually, um, making Mix Whoopi with at least one of them on Earth-167, but he got bored. Nobody could offer him a challenge. Then one day, presto, Superman! 
man. He messes with him here, there, everywhere. This cartoon, that CW drama, this video game, that coloring book. Along the way, he fell in love a couple dozen times, had another kid or two or five, got involved with various interdimensional conspiracies and law-breaking and supervillainous debauchery, died and came back to life a few times, even lost his powers to the Joker once, that was a doozy. After the tribunal forced him to repent with those he'd hurt, he helped Supergirl and the gang defeat their fifth dimensional foes, and it seems his most recent role is thinking he looks best as a Supreme Kai. No matter what universe you're in, it's always the same. Also, he potentially runs the fifth dimension now? Is that the biggest takeaway of all of this, that I've somehow stumbled on some 50 years long conspiracy to put Mixie on the throne of Zerf? Grant Morrison, hit us up, our email's in the About tab. That explains everything. In the end, countless Mr. Mixia Spitlick stories are going to be written past the publishing of this video. He will go on to pester and prattle and prank his way around Superman until the end of days. A comic could be released next week that shows Mixie was actually Darkseid's grandpa or has been made of Havarti cheese this whole time, and we'd have to be like, okay. I'm what happens when the cosmos turns itself into a funny little man in a purple hat. In the course of your comic reading, you've no doubt met many odd characters, but none, we'll wager, more unusual than the absurd being known as Mr. Mixia Spitlick. <sighs> What a name. DC is the multiverse publisher. Right. <laughs> like the one who made up the multiverse crisis on Infinite Earths, everything. So it is kind of fun to be like, okay, but there is one set point in every universe, and it's this asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that. And until next time, wreck. Wait, what does that say on the teleprompter? Record Samage? No. No. No! Boy, does he have it all backwards. You said it. <laughs> <laughs>For my question of the day, I just want to know your favorite Mixie actor. Who personifies the essence of Mixed Pickle the best? Thank you so much to Timothy Banfield for the delightful Gilbert Gottfried impressions, Eric Carrasco, Tim Sheridan, Mark Warshaw, and Josie Campbell, who helped me glue all of this together properly. And of course, thank you to Big Bad Toy Store for sponsoring, and to all our lovely Patreon supporters seen here. We just need like 75 more of you so we can make that Teen Titans the Batman video. Thank you! I posted a purple bowler hat as a teaser for this video, and so many of you thought it was about the Riddler. The Riddler's hat is green! That's him!